Hey guys, this is the F86 F25. It's reference model in a realistic flight mode. And the first thing you're going to notice about it in uh, 1.39 is that its takeoff run has gotten quite a lot longer. Don't worry too much, all jet aircraft in the game have had their low speed acceleration pretty heavily dropped. Because jet aircraft were renowned for not accelerating well at low speeds. So believe it or not, it's actually pretty realistic having all the aircraft, even the MiG-15, can't accelerate at low speed as well as it used to. Which means even the MiG-15's takeoff run is quite a lot longer than it used to be. So that's not necessarily the Sabre being nerfed, that's just all jets having their low speed taken care of. And all swept wing planes, which basically just means the Sabre, the Law 5, or the Law 15 and the MiG-15, all of them have had their low speed turn rate pretty heavily dropped, which means these swept wing planes do not handle well at low speeds, as you can see right now, which is perfectly realistic. None of them handled well at low speeds. In fact, pretty much any straight wing jet could outturn pretty much any swept wing jet at low speeds. The 262 isn't really affected by that because its wings aren't swept anywhere near enough to actually act like a swept wing plane. <laughs> So the 262 isn't really affected by that. It's more affected by its extremely high wing loading. One of the highest of any fighters in the game. But the Sabre... Uh, one of my biggest problems with the Sabre was its high speed roll rate. Its low speed roll rate was also not particularly realistic. But its high speed roll rate was really, really not realistic. In the last patch. Um... So, would you like to see what its roll rate? This is its low speed roll rate. Not super impressive. Let's do a coordinated roll using the rudder. So, its, it's low speed roll rate's not super impressive, but it's acceptable. Um, so, I'm guessing you want to see what its high speed roll rate is like. So, let's get up to around 500 miles per hour. And, uh, I suggest you sit down for this, you know, if you're not sitting down already. Three. Two, one. Oh my god! It actually acts like it's supposed to now! <laughs> oh my god! Oh, this, oh, this is gonna be fun! Quick, let's go faster! <laughs> let's see what it does at 600. I don't think I've ever been this excited for anything they've ever changed in this game. <laughs> so, come on, 600 miles per hour, and look at its acceleration now. Its high speed acceleration is also quite good now. It really doesn't lose its acceleration when it gets to higher speeds. Which having a super low drag is pretty much how it should. So you're going to be out accelerating MiG 15s above 500 miles per hour now, which is really nice. Or at least you should be, I don't know. I haven't flown the MiG with its new flight model yet. But 640 miles per hour. Are we ready? Are we? Oh, it's starting to compress a little. But considering it takes the MiG about 15 seconds to do a roll at this speed, this really isn't too bad. Now the real question, uh, G-Lock. What's G-Lock like? Well, it's like this. Oh, I can't turn. Up, oh, up, oh, any day now. No, no. Well, someday, someday we'll turn around. Ah, right, there we go. So there's good things and bad things about G-Lock. The bad thing is, obviously, it's not necessarily a good thing that it takes you 30 seconds to do a 180 degree turn at 600 miles per hour. That's pretty poor. The really good thing about G-Lock is you'll notice I came out of that turn at 610 miles per hour. Doing, and, because in how the game used to be, if a Sabre was flying in a straight line, if I was doing 650 miles per hour, a MiG just came out of a dive behind me doing 700 miles per hour because they used to be able to hit 700 in dives pretty easy. I would then go to do a turn. If I did a gentle turn to try and maintain my energy, the MiG would easily turn inside of me at 12G and shoot me down. Now, if I go to do a turn, oh, be careful. You can still rip your wings during that initial turn if you're not careful. But now I go into a turn, I can only turn sustainably at 5 and a half G's or about six G's. A MiG-15 can't turn any harder than this at this speed and because the MiG-15 was gaining on me that means the MiG is actually going faster than I am which means the MiG can't even turn this hard. 
basically what it means is the slower aircraft is going to have a huge advantage in turn time, which is exactly how it should be in reality. So it's going to make dogfights much more realistic. It's going to make being faster than your opponent no longer the auto win it used to be. So energy is going to become still, it's still very important, but it's not as important. And you'll notice I'm turning as hard as I can, holding W. That's all the elevator I can do. I'm still over 600 miles per hour, and this is, I believe, the third circle I've done. <laughs> I've done three turns. And also notice I'm losing a little bit of altitude, but I'm maintaining speed. <laughs> this is the Sabre's sustained turn time. It just happens to also be its maximum turn time, or its minimum turn time, I mean at 600 miles per hour. The MiG-15, on the other hand, will be losing speed in that turn, if it's realistic. I don't know if it's realistic or not, but since the Sabre does have a superior sustained turn time at these speeds, a MiG should be losing energy faster than a Sabre at high speed turning. To the extent we're in that turn where I wasn't losing speed, let's do it again. I'm going to use mouse aim to bring me into the turn gently, rather than violently. If you just smash W down, you actually can still rip your wings, but look. I'm gaining altitude. I'm not losing speed. Oh, now I'm losing speed. But <laughs> the Sabre's sustained turn time just happens to also be its maximum turn time now. <laughs> or its minimum turn time now. That is That opens up a whole new world of tactics. You know how the MiG-15 used to be able to do those infinite loop things due to the MiG-15 still having the climb rate advantage over the Sabre? A MiG should still be able to do pretty much an unlimited number of medium to low speed loops. The Sabre now has its own infinite, annoying thing that it can do to get MiGs to not be able to effectively attack it, and that's a 620 mile per hour 6G turn. If a MiG is going slower than you, they're not going to be able to catch you in the loop. They're going to have to cut down through the center of the loop, and you can see them doing that. You'll see them coming in, and you'll just straighten out and outrun them, because if they're slower than you, they can turn inside of you. If they're not slower than you, they can't turn inside of you. And what that means is the only way a MiG-15 is going to get inside of you to shoot you is if they slow down. And if they slow down, then you can level off and outrun them. And because the Sabre has superior acceleration above about 520 miles per hour now, and 610 miles per hour is a long way over 510 miles per hour, that means there's no way how a MiG is going to catch you, which means you have a defensive maneuver that you can do. Keep the 11 Gs there, then G-Lock just smashes down to, nope, no, no more turning for you. So this G-Lock, a lot of people are going to get mad at this, a lot of people are going to smash themselves into the ground because of it, but I love it. It's going to make everything so much more realistic because the MiG is limited to the exact same G-Load the Sabre is. The difference being the Sabre, because the G-Suit can pull more of those quick Gs out. Uh, I pulled seven Gs for several seconds there. A MiG-15 can't pull for anywhere near that long. Peter just had a stroke there. But so this is gonna this is gonna open up a whole new world of tactics for both aircraft, and it's gonna make everything much much more realistic. Um, the one slight downside is the Saber can no longer reach its top speed in level flight at sea level. It's not supposed to. The Saber is supposed to reach its top speed at I believe 3,000 meters, while the MiG-15 does reach its top speed at sea level. With that said, you're still gonna be outrunning MiG-15s no problem at sea level. The Sabre used to be about 40 miles per hour faster, now it's only about 25, but it, it's still clearly faster than the MiG-15. So you're still the fastest one. And your roll rate at high speed is just so good. You also notice how much speed you bleed when you're in a roll. That's because it really screws with your aerodynamics as the plane's pitching around when you try and roll. Oh, just peaked 11 Gs there. As I said, if you come out of a dive near 700 miles per hour and you just smash W to try and pitch up, you're going to rip your wings still. It's still fully possible, but you you almost have to try to do it. Which is why the old, you can easily not rip your wings just by using mouse aim to start the turn, wait until you start to black out, and then hold W. It makes much for a much smoother transition, and there's no chance at all of you ripping your wings then. So I would highly recommend you do that, rather than just smashing W. Unless you're under 600 miles per hour, in which case, yeah, just smash W. In the Sabre, I have no idea what happens in the MiG-15. If you just smash W, you're going to have to figure that out for yourself. Uh, the Sabre also has, it can no longer break the sound barrier at sea level. It rips its wings at about 700 miles per hour even now, which it used to be able to go faster than that at sea level in a straight line. 
But the MiG-15 has also had its its rip speed drastically lowered. I'm pretty sure the MiG rips at about 680, which means the Saber can actually reach the MiG-15's wing rip speed in level flight still. It's just the Saber can't outdive the MiG by as much as they used to, but you still can. And the MiG can't outclimb the Saber as much as they used to, but they still can. So the aircraft are much closer, which means it's it's much it's a much more even fight. I, st I wouldn't say fair. The Saber is still a better zoom fighter, and I still firmly believe zoom fighters beat energy fighters more often than not. But they are much closer to each other, which should make the fights much more tactical and much less about exploiting your advantage, and it's going to be a lot more about exploiting the situation you happen to find yourself in. So the situational advantages are going to be more important than the just overall advantage. Or so I think. Death to the boats. Haha. -ha. Pulled a nice little 9G turn there for a second or so. Get into a nice zoom climb. This plane still zoom climbs very well. Um, let's see if its zoom climbs change at all. It used to be able to hit 6,000 meters out of a zoom climb in realistic if you were careful. I don't believe I'm going to. I wasn't at my top speed when I started. And it also used to build huge amounts of speed during the zoom climb. So you'd go to zoom climb to high altitude, then dive back down, and you'd end up at a much higher speed at sea level than when you started. Let's see if it happened. Although it's it's low speed maneuverability. Like all the swept wing jets has been hit pretty hard. So be aware of that when you're fighting meteors or any other straight wing plane that they can outturn you at extremely low speeds pretty easily now. So, let's see what kind of speeds we get to. Are we going to reach our buffet speed? It looks like we're going to reach our buffet speed in this dive. Oh, yes we are. Oh, yes we are. Oh, God, we might actually rip. Oh, shite. But see what I mean? This plane buffets like hell at 700 indicated. And it, it will rip its wings before you reach your 707 mile per hour that used to be your top speed at sea level. So the Sabre and the MiG have both been slowed down quite a bit, but they're they're a lot closer to where they realistically should be. Uh, which means we can finally say that the MiG-15 and the Sabre are both sort of realistic. Neither of them are really perfect yet, but they're both a lot closer than they used to be. And there's 5k meters, so it can't zoom climb quite as well as it used to, but that's probably down to it having a lower speed than it used to at the bottom of the zooms. But the MiG has the same problem now. Well, it's not really a problem. And it's not a problem at all. You're just going to have to relearn the new numbers. Because nothing's really changed. You've just been brought closer together. Which is nice. It's going to make the, the fights, as I said, much more tactical, much less strategic. Which should mean a lot less jockeying for position. And a lot more fighting. So let's see if I actually can hit my rip speed in this dive. I am a little upset that we can't break the sound barrier at sea level anymore. Oh god. Oh jeez. Oh, I can it actually does lock up the elevator at high speed. And I actually did that actually compression stalled the tail there. Or it, it looked like that's what happened. It might not have been. I don't know. But uh yeah, the high speed flight physics have gotten quite a bit better than they used to be. And there you go. That's <laughs> the saber locking up in a dive. It actually happens now. It just it you really have to push it. So basically, the era where the Sabre could hit Mach 0.12 in a dive and the MiG-15 could break the sound barrier in a dive, both of those eras are over. The MiG, I'm pretty sure, can no longer break the sound barrier, or at least not easily and not controlled, while the Sabre can only go up to Mach 1.05, which is all it could do in reality. So the game has just gotten much more realistic when it comes to jets and realistic. And I'm very happy, because it, <laughs> it looks like this is going to make it much funner. Also might not. I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see, but I approve of what they've done to the Saber's flight model. Here you will, Saber. Here you will, Saber. Subscribe! Unless you haven't. Unless you have already. In which case, you can just pretend to subscribe. I'll just we'll keep it between us.